Hey guys, this video is going to be on a program called Interactive Ruby, which is uh, basically a shell script. Uh, we can run uh, Ruby commands and, and get immediate responses. Uh, we can do experimenting in real time. Um, it features a command line history, so we can go back and look at what we've done. And it's just a good tool to to experiment with the Ruby language. So. We can create variables, arrays, um, we can create classes and objects. So that's what we're going to be doing in this chapter. I did have to remake it because my original video, uh, the resolution was too high and we couldn't really see the commands. So I'm remaking it in a smaller resolution. So hopefully you'll be able to uh, see the commands. So. Uh, if you've been following along and you installed Rails Installer in the last chapter, then you already have Interactive Ruby on your system. To get to it, just go to your Start menu and All Programs, and then you want to go to Rails Installer and then Interactive Ruby. And that will bring up the command line window for us. Um, don't be intimidated by this. I know some people uh, a little scared of the command line, but we're not going to be doing anything that's that advanced. Uh, just some basic programming. So I guess the first thing to talk about is the prompt. You see we have IRB, which is just interactive Ruby. Uh, and then we have the scope. We have the main scope here. and We're not going to really need to, to deal with this right now. Uh, the next the next aspect of the of this prompt is the line number so we're on line number one obviously uh, it's a three digit number uh, until of course you get past 999 um, and then we have this zero and the zero is probably the uh, most difficult to understand uh, now when you're programming in interactive Ruby you're always at a level uh, I guess you could call it a level or a layer, um, but the default level is zero. Now, if we create a class, if we start dealing with uh, object oriented programming and we, we create a class and then we're working from in that class, it's going to, this zero is now going to be a one. We're going to be on the layer for that class. And if we say create a method or a function in that class, and then we're dealing, we're programming inside of that function, this is going to turn to a 3 because we're now on that level. We can only, uh, there's, there's resources that only you can access on that level. And then when you're done with the function and then you break out of the class, then this will go back to 0, which is the default layer. Alright, so let's talk about some commands. The, the easiest commands, uh, to understand are, well there's two of them, there's print and then there's puts, P-U-T-S, and all these do is print out on the screen. So let's say print, we'll print a string, we'll say hello world. And you can see what it is, is it echoes back out hello world. And then you see this nil, and what that means basically is there's no errors or there's nothing in the way. Uh, it basically just means that what we tried to do it worked. So the next command I want to show you is puts. So let's say puts. We'll do the same thing. We'll say hello world, and you can see here that the only difference in interactive Ruby is there's a line break after what we print out, and then the nil. So if you need statements that need to print on the same line, um, then you should use print. And you can see that our line numbers have changed. We're now on line three. Uh, the actual printed content that, that we get from our command doesn't count as a line number. All right, so that's how you can print stuff out on the screen. Uh, we can also do basic math. So let's just say, um, 5 plus 5, it'll give us 10. Now we can also do division, let's say uh, 7 divided by 3. And you notice we get 2. Now the reason this happens, because we know it's not 2, we know that it's a float, it's a decimal. 
but since we didn't put decimals in, we're not going to get a decimal out. So you get in what you put, you get out what you put in, and we put in integers. So if we change this around and we say 7.0 divided by 3.0, we get our 2.3 or 2. Point and a bunch of threes. Um, but the, the the key is that you get back what you put in. So that's basic math. Um, I guess what we could go into next is variables. And if you have any experience in um, pretty much any programming language, then you probably know what a variable is. Uh, it's basically just a placeholder. Uh, it's a value that can change. Um, and variables, depending on what language you're using, variables have certain restrictions. Um, for instance, in PHP, which is a server-side language, uh, all variables need to have the dollar sign. Uh, they need to have a leading dollar sign. And let's see, most programs, inc including Ruby, um, variables start with a letter. So you, they need to start with a letter. It can't start with a number or a character. Um, the only other character that you can have in a variable in Ruby and many other languages is the underscore. Um, but it, like I said, it can't start with an underscore. And another important rule is that variables are case sensitive. So if you have the variable person, if you have it with a lowercase, and then you create a variable with the with an uppercase p. Uh, those are going to be two different values, two different variables. And so let's create a variable. Let's just say uh, person equals. Br now, if you're going to use a string, it needs to have quotes. So we'll just say person equals Brad. If we hit enter, it's just going to give us back what we put in. Okay. Um, and now, if we want, we can say print person and it'll give us what the variable is which is a string called Brad and it also gives us nil because there was nothing else no errors to report or anything like that now variables don't have to be strings you can have numbers for variables and you can actually perform calculations so let's say x x equals 5 and let's say y equals 10 now we can say x plus y and it will give us back 15. So this is very basic stuff. Um, in the coming sections we'll be getting into arrays, loops, and objects. Um, one more thing I wanted to show you is if you want to find what scope a certain value or a certain variable is in, you can use the defined command. So we'll do defined and then a question mark and then a variable, let's say x, and it'll just tell us what, it'll just tell us the scope really. Now this is a local variable. All right, so if we were in a class, it would tell us which class, and, and, or in a, a method, tell us which method, so uh, that can be useful. But that's enough for this section. Uh, we'll be getting into, like I said, more advanced um, programming techniques along the way. So I will see you in the next section.